Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker. Established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys and offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Business First Bank, with locations throughout the state, including 11 offices in the Baton Rouge area, providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank. Banking with greater momentum at B1Bank.com. From Mansour's on the Boulevard, we're out to lunch with Stephanie Regal. Stephanie Regal is a broadcaster and editor of Baton Rouge Business Report. It's business Baton Rouge style. Hi, I'm Stephanie Regal. Welcome to Out to Lunch. When you sit down to search the internet for something, you've probably noticed the advertisers vying for your attention. But what you may not be aware of is that all those helpful blogs and lists of things you gotta know are often carefully crafted marketing pieces designed to draw you in and eventually sell you something. It's a brave new world of marketing and messaging, and Natalie Noel is a local expert in this emerging field. Her firm, Tech Advocate Group, specializes in high-tech marketing, specifically what we call inbound marketing, which is a way of attracting customers to a website by providing them with really interesting and useful content rather than bombarding them with advertisements and spam. This is a concept, it's a term really that's only been around about 10 years and it's evolving almost daily. So Natalie, it's a good thing you're young enough to keep up with all the changes, <laughs> the ever-changing field. Welcome to Out to Lunch. Great, thank you, happy to be here. And, and so while companies are increasingly sophisticated about how they're marketing to their customers, they're also putting more attention than ever on how they tailor their message. Public relations goes hand in hand with marketing and advertising, and few know more about providing good PR, both the old school way and in the new digital age, than Ann Edelman, who heads up PR for Zender Communications, one of the biggest advertising and PR firms in the state. We have offices both in New Orleans and Baton Rouge. And welcome to Out to Lunch. Thrilled to be here. Well, there's so much overlap in, in what both of y'all do and so many really interesting things to talk about. Natalie, I want to start with Tech Advocate Group for a minute. Y'all specialize in inbound marketing, right? Which is, I understand it, is a way of attracting potential customers to a website through compelling content, right? Not just bombarding them with advertisements. Do I have that right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it all started uh, because the way that the buyer got to making, th they changed the way that they made their decisions. So no longer did they want to just immediately pick up the phone and call a salesperson and talk to them at that point. So with the power of the internet, they have all of the power in their hands to do their research. So what's happening is 70% of the buyer's process is, is taking place on their own. They're doing their own research with right. you know Google and everything like that. So what we help our clients do is first figure out what their messaging is, who they're targeting, and then make compelling content that they can put on their website, distribute out through different channels, uh, you know, some be with PR, different things like that, so they can educate their buyers as they go through the buyer's journey. And at Tech Advocate Group, do y'all actually write this content? On the marketing side, yes, we create the content. We help them identify who their buyer personas are, who, how are they going to target those particular buyers, how do those particular buyers like to consume content, where do they like to consume it, is it a blog, is it a, is it a white paper, is it a, a video, you know, so we, we walk them through that whole content strategy, mm -hmm. and then we help them uh, with the promotion side, uh, and then, and also just, the technology comes in at the end because you can actually prove your worth. You can actually prove and, and show that because this content- Because the metrics there, Right, the metrics right? are there. They can, you can see who, who read it, how long they read it for, did they share it, uh, and then you can give real actionable insights to the CMOs, to the CEOs of the company, so that they no longer feel like marketing is, is just this fluff cost center within their organization. And that's where I get most excited. This we can prove that we're, we're somewhat, uh, do, we can do our job now. Well, how do you convert, say, a blog reader into a buyer? Or is that y'all's job, or is that up to the client? You just get them in, reel them in. Let's be honest, I mean, a blog, it, it's, it's part of a, a content campaign. I mean, it, it, if, you, if you get lucky and you do convert at that uh, moment, that's pretty fantastic, but it's part of a strategy. And so, but you always want to make sure, like specifically for a blog, that you have a compelling call to action, that you offer them something else, as they continue to educate themselves towards your product or service. So it's just the starting point. 
Now, Anne, I want to bring you in on this because I know Zender does a lot of this as well, even though you're really on the PR side, but this is really the brave new world of marketing today, is it not? Exactly, and what you're talking about as far as content, content is everything right now, because you're right, we have so many channels that we can use, and once you get your strategy, you know, you have strategy and tax tactics, and once you develop what the strategy is, just like what you're saying, messaging, audiences, and then you can really test and see. I mean, the old adage used to be, I know 50% of my advertising is working, I just don't know what 50% what it is. Now it's a whole different world. I mean, we can tell what time of day certain posts should be placed on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. There's so many different channels and then you're really looking for it to get an organic life of its own. And that really is the beauty of PR and social media and the marriage between all these different disciplines mm -hmm. to be able to affect those decisions because consumers are making decisions in different ways and they want objective and subjective information and that's why social media cha cha channels are really just as important as traditional public relations in many cases. Well, let's back up for a minute because I introduced you as a PR person. What does public relations really do and how does public relations fit into this overall scheme? Well, I think public relations does a lot of things because there's so many tactics that we can use. I mean, obviously we have very traditional with press releases and press conferences and pitches and advisories and things like that, but also you're looking at, you know, um, you know, event marketing, grassroots, sponsorship, product placement. So it's really taking a client, bringing them in, looking at what the strategy should be, and then picking out the tactics. A lot of times what we see is that clients fit in certain buckets. One is just that clients are looking to enhance their brand. And they realize that this entire approach, social media creative, media buying, all of that is going to get them to the mountain. Other clients are looking at public relations because they may have to be dealing with very complicated issues. And it's nice to have a middleman to be able to work with the press because a lot of companies simply don't understand they understand their own companies from backwards and forwards, but they don't understand the process of how news works. Mm -hmm. And especially now that the news cycle is not like when I started. It never stops. Exactly. 24 seven. Yeah, so before you would wait for the six or 10 o'clock news or you'd wait for the morning paper to hit your you know, driveway to see how the story was portrayed. Now you're right, it's 24 hours, so the timelines in meeting the deadlines for reporters, and so we find that's a big need as well that we can fulfill to help companies be able to get the information because our philosophy is we don't want to make the deadline, we want to beat the deadline because we know the pressure on journalists is just immense right now. And the companies that are your clients, my clients, they if they are committed to a, a PR strategy as an important way to grow their brand and increase sales, they have to outsource that. I mean, you have to be, you have, first of all, you have to have the relationships with mm -hmm. the, the reporters and the journalists and understand how they work. I mean, and you have to be committed to following up and being there and, and giving the reporters and everything that they need. I mean, unless they have someone dedicated in-house to do that, it's, it's going to just... Because it's just so it's sophisticated so and, and so time-consuming now, yeah. both, right? Well, and, and I think it's, it's the like relationship, though, too. I mean... And, and look, you know, Stephanie, from all your work and all the different media, you know, whether you're pre preparing someone for a TV interview is very different from a radio interview, which is very different from a social media post to a press release. And because I think that there are so many channels and it gets very complicated, and also I think it's always good for both of our businesses to have someone from the outside maybe looking in, because we're only as good as our clients are. So that spirit of collaboration and cooperation is really what makes a brand and a brand strategy grow. So, so let's take the whole brand and marketing issue and, and the internet and, and how, I mean, how can we trust what we see on, on the web today, on a blog, when there is so much going on behind the scenes, when there's so much inbound marketing? How, you know, is this deceptive? I mean, I don't think so. First of all, you want to make sure you have trusted resources and that you're the, where you're getting your content from is, is accurate. I mean. I know like for some of our biggest some of our biggest clients that are really it's very important to their 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 business because they have a highly complex say like a surgeon they have a highly complex offering 
They have patients that are looking to get educated prior to the visit. They want to know. So you have to educate them and I mean, I would never be an advocate of anything that would be misleading. I mean, you almost wonder, is there any objective content on the web at all? I mean, before the, the, the job of, of big media, I guess, was to vet things, right? And to present the unbiased truth. Now with the web, anybody can put anything out there and the really sophisticated marketers put out there what they want True. with their own slant. Even if it's not untrue or bad, it's just told with a certain slant. Well, and I think that it, it comes down to two things. I think one, consumers are really very discerning and very smart, and yeah. I think people have learned oh, yeah. to kind of poke the holes and be able to see who's credible or not. But I think it also speaks to the importance of mainstream journalism and the importance that we really keep mainstream journalism, you know, as journalism kind of shrinks, right? Mm -hmm. That we really look at that because that is the objective. And that's why it's important sometimes to look at a social media strategy hand in hand with a public relations strategy because you want the credibility of what that objective reporter is going to give you along with other messaging, other information that's going to help make ultimately what may be a very complex consumer decision. Right. Y'all still see journalists as, as gatekeepers? I guess they are definitely you know, sought after. <laughs> you definitely want to get on the good side so they will consider the stories that you have. Um, I mean, I know like as far as on the content side for our, some of our clients and then some of the larger companies around the country, they're hiring journalists on to come on staff because content is such an important part really? of their strategy. So while they may not be working at news outlets or you know publications, uh, those, those may not be as prevalent, but they are finding a home at, at actual companies or and then content marketing companies like ours. I mean, they're extremely valuable. If you can go in, ask great questions, and uh, pull that content together in a in a really easy to easy to read. I mean that's. I mean of course, we then have they've sort of gone over to the other side, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. Are these strategies only for big companies or or small businesses it, like in this market? Obviously, uh, doing this as well. I would say. What I'm seeing, and we work with across the board, folks with small budgets and then folks that have uh, much larger budgets that can afford the software and also can afford the content development. And people just have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So whatever your budget is, and you take that into consideration, and you start someplace that you can have an impact, that you know where a majority of your customers are consuming content, and that you know if you present, if you have it in that particular arena, then they will be able to consume it, and potentially you'll be able to uh, convert sales. So like, so we, we do a lot with sales enablement. And in my mind, all that is, is creating content for the salespeople to use as they go through their sales process. So it's slightly marketing content, but it's geared towards helping the salespeople push their sales process along, knowing that the buyer has changed. Knowing that the buyer has viewed all your website pages, so why would you show them more content that was on your website? Mm -hmm. So they're more educated, so we can present them with new content, knowing that we have the analytics that, hey, customer A, they visited your pricing page, they visited your um, your blog, and they also downloaded this ebook. Yeah. Don't show them that. Show them something else. Like <laughs> help them get to the next step of their decision making process. So that that's the that's the fun mm -hmm. stuff. Like that's where content has is also going. It's on the sales side. Okay. And I think you make a great point. You, no matter what your budget is, you have to pick certain channels and you got to do them well because the worst thing you can do is spread out a, a budget even if you're a large company and not really own that channel sure. so you're right just beginning to understand who your audience is and what the message is and being very disciplined mm -hmm. about sticking to that and that's something that sometimes i like that own the yeah. channel <laughs> just own it just own it <laughs> is, is there any like single rule that if i'm a small business i know i got to get out there i don't have a lot of money would you say, well, social media is the thing you got to do, or does it depend on the individual company and its individual needs? It really depends on the company, and I think that's one of the things that we really strive is that we don't ever want to promote a cookie-cutter approach. A lot of clients will come in and say, oh, I assume I got to get on Facebook, I got to get on Twitter, and then we'll say there are channels that are so much more powerful for your audience. So you're not necessarily looking for sheer numbers as much as you're looking for the niche of how are you going to affect that audience. So anyone who says 
you know, this is the way for all companies really isn't taking into consideration. And again, just because there's so many options that you didn't have 20, 30 years ago where really paid media was the only way to go. Someone mm -hmm. on a low budget can do something. But again, I would say pick the channel, own it, and then be consistent over time. Y'all, let's talk about social media for a minute. And I know Ann and I have had this conversation many times, but it's, it's become so all-consuming today. If you're a business person, you're out there selling a product or service, do you absolutely have to have a social media presence? Whether it's Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, I mean, you have to be out there somewhere. Is that true? I don't think necessarily. Yeah, I really? Go, I go back and forth on that. I mean, I, I like paid advertising on, on Facebook more than I like you consuming all your resources with these goofy posts. That so because that's, that's no my one, question. Mm -hmm. You can waste so much time. People don't go to it. Yeah. I mean, people like you. That doesn't mean that they are always going back to check your page. A I like mean, doesn't necessarily mean a sale, it right? It doesn't mean engagement. Let's just be honest. I mean, you want people who are engaging with you. And... So, you know, I and mean it's just not one of those th th mediums that I think people are constantly going back to. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at B2B customers, mm -hmm. you know, B2B companies sure. versus B2C companies, right. a lot of times there really isn't a place for that. And that other branding may be better done in other areas. And again, even a large company that might have a really nice annual marketing advertising budget, you're still looking to own the channels you can own. They're going to affect their sales, their brand presence. So I would say absolutely not. I still think there are businesses out there that right. really at this point don't need it. I think I the majority of them do though, are going to need some kind of social media presence. I would say, let's just make sure your website is optimize it's answering the questions that your particular buyers have and then 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 move out from there and I'm I mean amazed sometimes at how it, it looks like a lot of companies put more emphasis on social media I'll go to websites now it looks like they haven't updated them in five years or ten years or or they'll say CR they don't even have them because I guess they think websites are obsolete and I yeah I don't think so at all that's the that's the foundation of a, a proper and inbound marketing campaign. I mean, that we, we like to think of it as a, a growth-driven design that you shouldn't just take a year to develop a website. Well, you shouldn't take a year ever to develop a website, <laughs> but you shouldn't <laughs> spend all that time and effort to develop a website and then let it sit for a couple of years and not look at it. You should be constantly analyzing. There's so many cool tools out there that you can get a heat map and see where people are, mm -hmm. are actually clicking on your website. Maybe you, th and you can run hypotheses on it. So. I thought that this, this CTA button or this call to action button, I thought would definitely get a lot of clicks, but you can see that no one is clicking on it. So why is it there? So you can constantly ask the question, why? Why did I put this, um, this piece of information here if no one is consuming it? You, know, you, mm -hmm. you can test yourself. So that's what we like to, that's why we like to be on a retainer where we're constantly working with them to, to modify. And because that's the cool thing now with marketing is you can ask questions, you can test everything. You don't have to just, <laughs> develop it and let right. it sit. It can continuously evolve it to where we know we want to increase sales. Yeah. I mean, a client can tell me, I want to increase sales like yesterday. We need to increase sales 6,000 a month. I was like, well, let's get to work, yeah. right? Because we, that's, that's quite a bit. So we can, <laughs> but we, we can, we have some, at least we have some avenues and places to start mm -hmm. now. So I say. Well, when you talk about heat mapping, because you're right, there's so many great tools, and also we'll bring clients in. We'll do usability testing for websites. So they may come in and say, I think my website needs to be updated, and we'll actually show them video of people using their website, and they're horrified a lot of times. Right. Wow. Because people can't navigate, or things they seem clear to them really aren't clear to the consumer. So just making those sometimes very cosmetic changes really makes a difference. And then all of a sudden you can take a look a month later and be saying, our page views are up. People are staying on our page instead of like 32 seconds or staying for a minute and 30 seconds. And so you can see those metrics and know you're going in the right direction. And that is just the most exciting and powerful thing that's going on now. Because again, it kind of goes back to your original question. Even a small business can use Google Analytics and other programs to really test and see what time they should be posting, what kind of content is working on their website, or people landing on their website from another source, and then within 12 seconds are off that site. 
Are they teaching kids in school all this stuff? I no. mean, in journalism school, <laughs> they used to teach you how to write, and then no. either you'd go on the advertising track or the PR track or the journalism track. This is a whole new, and, and of course, marketing was always a little bit different. I mean, they always learned a lot more social science and business on the marketing side, but yeah. this is a whole new field of Oh, yeah. And it changes so quickly. So quickly. That uh, the channels that maybe even six months ago weren't as popular that all of a sudden are exploding now. So it's really keeping up with the technology. What are the options? And then really, what are the up and comers? Really, where do we need to be looking for for the future? Before I go to the checklist, what, what, is, what channel is exploding today, right now? <laughs> What's the hottest thing? Uh, I like Periscope. I don't okay, know if haven't you guys even heard of it. Periscope? I don't know if you guys have played with it, but... I mean, we could be periscoping right now. It's just it enables you to live broadcast and allows people and, and, you and all your Twitter followers get notified that you're you're currently live broadcasting. Love it. And so they can interact with you. If they like what you're saying, they'll start shooting you hearts and you can reply back to them. And it is just really engaging. So like some clients, I'm, we're, trying to, we're trying to put together periscope strategies. Like how can you take advantage of this free tool you know, it, it notifies all your Twitter followers and you can be seen as a, an expert right on the spot doing what you're doing. And the metrics indicate that people are watching Periscope? I mean, they, it's growing. Okay. You know, I mean, it doesn't have as many followers and subscribers as the more popular ones like Facebook and Twitter, but it's definitely cool. <laughs> I mean, and then when you and look you at and you can save it, you can save, so now you have video content that mm -hmm. you can use and promote on other channels like YouTube, so. And video is hot, hot, hot right now. It People is. are loving video, and that's one of the reasons we think that Periscope is doing so well. But when also, when you just look at maybe the top 20 social media channels, I mean, you really see some interesting things because it may not be the one, you know, the billion people who are on Facebook, but you still may have 30 or 40 million people, you know, on other, you know, whether it's a Flickr or an Instagram or even an up-and-comer like Medium, where it that's is more video. That's another one I've never heard of, Medium. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing, and that's why it's so, wow. it, it really takes a village to really stay on top right. of what's going on. But it also takes common sense right you don't want to like we said you just don't want to stretch yourself so thin and get so involved with all these different channels if it doesn't if it doesn't affect the, doesn't affect the top line then we don't advocate for it well my question is always how do you really focus on on the strategy how do you develop good content and a, and a meaningful message if you're just off there on social media all day long flicking and <laughs> periscoping <laughs> and tweet decking I mean ha you know how do you really write and communicate something meaningful. I, it's a different way of thinking. Maybe I'm not there. Well, I know we've talked a lot about the industry overall and, and trends. One thing I want to touch base about with each of y'all, tell me about the most interesting thing that y'all have done with the, f with the firms, the companies you're with now. Can you tell me one story of your most interesting client, say, or your most challenging um, client at, at Tech Advocate Group and Zender? Well, Actually, I'll talk about one which really, um, really didn't fit any mold that we had before. Um, it w we got involved three years ago in a cold case murder, and um, it was really just to help wow. out a longtime friend and a former client, and all of a sudden, you know, Dateline NBC and 48 Hours and National News was calling, and it was really... Unbelievable. You huh? know, it was really a, a hard thing for the family because they were dealing with the arrest of the two people who had murdered the brother, the son of this in the family, and it just took a life of its own over the next th three years. And um, so different probably than just about anything else you do, right? In anything. <laughs> I mean, we do crisis communications all the time and we deal with people who are in court, but just the fact of the emotionality, um, dealing with a family that had gone through a murder, you know, seeing the brother fight for justice for 30 years. I mean, it was an amazing case. Um, and it in was the end, the bad guys were, were convicted, were right? co Everybody was convicted, and it was funny because on the, the last day of the last trial, one of the TV reporters walked up to me and said, I, I know, like, why are you here? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I, we never see this. 
And, you know, part of what I was explaining was, you know, all the different, the motion hearings, the messaging, the, the media calling, all of that. It's the last thing that a family in crisis, and a lot of times that's what we find with crisis clients anyway, is that... They, they don't want to be dealing with that. You, you can't, can't deal with it. That's exactly yeah. right. And so to have someone to come in... And, I mean, one, obviously, pre-planning for regular clients. I mean, every cl uh, business needs a crisis communications plan. But just the fact that we were able to help a family through something that we really had never seen yeah. up close was just, once again, one of the reasons I love this business. And I'm sure just like you, Natalie, because we get in and to get to see everything about all these different businesses over our careers and every business is unique and right. each one has its own challenges which is why just like you nothing is ever cookie cut right what about you natalie do you have a well that's a tough <laughs> one to follow so <laughs> something that good no so i <laughs> i think our most exciting and, and interesting project is there's a local surgeon here in town dr meredith warner she designed a flip-flop to treat plantar fasciitis and we i'm a, actually through the start of the th from today so you know helping with the logistics helping with the product marketing coming up with the the, the even the name of the brand developing the brand um, you know getting the the product here building the website that you know, is great e and she's doing well with this product she's, right? she's doing really well with it and so we're attempting some PR I'm not we're not ever going to advertise that we are a PR company but uh, I'm somewhat invested in this in this particular business, so um, so we're doing the best that we can. But we've we've enjoyed the entire product marketing, coming up with uh, with uh, the grassroots campaigns and and actually doing all of her local press. But I was just coming up with that concept from yeah. start to finish. And As one who suffered with plantar fasciitis, I can really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> That's great. And so though. watching that yeah. company grow and then as the, the needs evolved, it, it's a purely PR strategy right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see where well, it goes. One of the great things about the internet in this new digital age of communication is that you don't have to be on Madison Avenue to do great marketing, advertising, and PR. You can do it right here in Baton Rouge as Tech Advocate Group and Zender Communications show us. So, Natalie Noel and Ann Edelman, thanks for joining me today on Out to Lunch. Already we're, we're done, so. <laughs> cool. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. My guests on Out to Lunch today have been Natalie Noel of Tech Advocate Group and Ann Edelman of Zender Communications. You can find out more about Tech Advocate Group and Zender Communications by following the links on our website, wrkf.org and itsbatonrouge.la. Today's show is recorded live over lunch at Mansour's on the Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Mansour's is open for lunch daily from 11 to 2, for dinner nightly, and for brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical producer is Eric Merle. Our associate producer is Peter Raschuti. And our Baton Rouge business consultants are Charlie D'Agostino and Ann Edelman. You can see photos from this show on itsbatonrouge.la and on our Facebook page. These photos are taken by Ken Stewart. Mitch Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. Mitch's new album, Puzzle, is out now. You can find out more about that at MitchellForeman.com. You can get this show as a podcast, you can listen to past shows, and you can keep up with us on all kinds of social media by going to our websites, itsbatonrouge.la and wrkf.org. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsbatonrouge.la and wrkf 89.3 FM. I'm Stephanie Regal. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Mansur's for more business Baton Rouge style on Out to Lunch. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker. Established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys and offices throughout the U.S. Providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com And by Business First Bank with locations throughout the state, including 11 offices in the Baton Rouge area, providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank. Banking with greater momentum. At B1Bank.com.